Hello everyone, it's me Lane and welcome to my channel Miss Lane Diaries. It's been a long time that I have not created any video for my channel and today I hope that all of you are doing well. And today I'm going to share to you this tutorial, Creating the Data Dictionary. So in creating a data dictionary, we should first discuss what is it all about. So data dictionary contains the detailed description of our database tables. So it means that before you can create your database tables, you should create a detailed description about it. It should include the attributes and characteristics of the tables. It contains the metadata or the data about the data. The very purpose of data dictionary is to serve as a guide for the database designers and developers. They're using it for have a uniform table names and attributes and characteristics in designing and creating the database. So for the elements of the data dictionary, from our source, it has a table name, the attribute name, the contents, the type, the format, the range, if it is required, primary key or foreign key, and the foreign key reference table. So these are the elements of the data dictionary, and we are going to discuss it one by one. For the table name, that is the name of the table that you are describing. Okay, so for example, student, customer. Attribute names, on the other hand, are the name of the attributes for the said table. It should follow naming conventions. For example, you have a table named department. So one example of its attribute is depth code. Contents. The contents describe the actual contents for the attribute, like depth name. The content is describing the, that it is the name of the department. Now let's go to the next part, the type. Type pertains to the data type for the attribute. MySQL, as one of the database management systems, has different data types. So there are numeric data types. Numeric data types are integer numbers or floating point numbers. So the data types for MySQL are the following, tiny int, small int, medium int, int, big int, float, double. These numbers differs in terms of ranges and in terms of numbers. So for example, so tiny int, small int, medium int, int, big int are for integer numbers and float and double are for decimal. Another one is for character string data types. We have her here, car for a string, which is in fixed length, var car or varying character, which is in varying length, which also accepts string values, tiny text, tiny blob, text and blob, medium text, medium blob, long text and long blob, these are the data types that receives string or character values. They just differ in sizes. And for the other one, which is enum or enumeration, this is for the data types which has specified values, such as male and female for this one. And we have also date and time data types. Date and time data types are the following. Date date time, timestamp here, and this one are the specifications of how it is formatted. So this data types describes what are the specific types of data that should be in our tables. Okay, for the next one, we have the format. The format specifies how the values would be formatted. For example, the ID. How is it formatted? The range specifies the range of values. For example, for our age, 1 to 100. 
or 1 to 200 if there are ages that is beyond than 100. Required. This specifies whether the attribute should have a value or not. The PK or FK specifies if the attribute is a primary key or a foreign key. Primary key is an attribute that uniquely identifies all other attribute values. This is unique. The foreign key, on the other hand, is an attribute whose values matches the primary key of the reference table. We will have an example later. Foreign key reference table specifies a table in which the foreign key is related. So now let's have an example. So considering we have this ERD, the course generates a class and a class has trainees enrolled and instructor teaches a class. So these are our, the entities now become our table. The attributes now here are our attributes that should be described and the relationships are also here. So now let's start with course and then the class, okay? So for the course and the class, we have here the course. The course code as our primary key. It's, it has a contents course code and the type is varying character and the format is like this. It's just an example and the ranges is not specified and then we put it as required because primary key should not be null. And then course units, this is the number of the course number of units, which is with specified tiny int and with a format of like this. And it is still required. And we go to course name, which is having a uh, type of varying character with a range uh, with a size of 100. And it has this format, meaning it will start with capital letter and small letters. And let's go now to the class. So for the class, we have class code. And we have here the class section code and the data type. And we specify it as our primary key. And then we have the class days and the class time. Remember that we did not... Um, use the time stamp here because it has a range of days and uh, time. That's why we use the varying character. So in putting the data type, you should consider what will be the size and what will be the specified data type for that. Because when you're going to put a very long range of data type for a short range only of uh, values, you are not reserving its memory. So um, you better choose a, a specific data type for a specific um, attribute. Okay, so now let's go to the class time. Okay, now let's, we have here the course code and the instructor ID FK. So these are the foreign keys. So how are foreign keys being created? Let's go back to our ERD. So for the ERD, we have course generates class. In our rule, if you have one to many relationship, the many side should have the primary key of what is in the one side. Okay, so for for in this case, the class is the many side. So that means that we are going to have a foreign key in the class and the primary key of the course and the instructor will be the foreign key of our class. That's why in here, we have here course code FK and ins ID FK. These are the foreign keys. These foreign keys reference to the tab to the attributes of the tables. So, for example, this one, the first one, course code FK. This one is a foreign key that refers to course table. Remember that when you are going to have a foreign key, 
the data type should be the same. So that's why we have here varying character 20 and we have here vari varying character 20 as well. So that they would not have um, a complications in terms of um, compatibility issues. So you need to have the same data types. So for the case of instructor, we have here foreign key that refers to the reference table, which is instructor. Now let's go to the next. So here's the instructor. So here's the instructor ID and the data type and the contents and it's the primary key. Okay, now let's go to trainee. The trainee has trainee ID number and then it has the primary key and the other attributes are also here. So as you can see, we use here enumerated for male and female for the gender of the trainee. Now let's go to this one, the last part. Okay, for many-to-many -many relationship type, the rule is for every many-to-many -many relationship type, you should create another table. So that's why we create another table here, class underscore trainee. And the primary key of the tables that are participating in the relationship should be the primary key of our new table at the same time a foreign key. That's why we have here TRA underscore ID underscore FK and class code underscore FK, which refers to the primary key of the trainee and the primary key of the class. At the same time, it is now the primary key of the class underscore trainee new table that we have created. So that's it. That's how to create the data dictionary. So again, data dictionary has the following, the table name, the attribute name, the contents, the type, the format, the range. If you are going to specify whether it is required or not, you are going to put primary key or the foreign key and then the table which it is reference. So that's all for this session. I hope that you have learned something. So if you have questions and clarifications regarding this tutorial, please leave a comment below. So for my references, I have found this for the references of this tutorial. That's all. Thank you. Have a good day.